Hello. Um, communication. That's what I want to talk about, about today. I've been observing over the summer different styles of communication and different trends in communication. Uh, and there's one thing that we're all, you know, in a marketing context, we're sharing our business and we're talking about our message. We want to talk about crafting our message. You know, we're, we're, we're given the 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 line that we need to be focusing on the results and constructing it according to, according to psychology and all the rest of it and so on the face of it we're thinking about how that message is received but i'm wondering whether or not you really think about how that message is received i'm sure we've all had examples of things have we read things that have really lifted us up or have really <laughs> we've wanted to keep well away from we've read them and just went I don't, don't want anything to do with it and we've all had examples of that and the reason that we respond in those ways is because of the energy behind the words um, and there's a recent bit of research that says that the energy of words can actually even impact our DNA um, and so you know the energy behind words is really important so do you ever think about how that energy is being received? And I don't mean in the way of, oh, will people like it? Or what if I say something wrong? Or, you know, um, will it get the results that I want it to do? Not that, not that sort of reception, but the energetic reception of your community. And that's a really tricky one. So I was just thinking of some examples of how that energetic reception is managed because it isn't a straightforward thing we're talking about. We are talking about psychology. We're talking about delivering messages to people whose situations that we don't know. Therefore, we don't know what filters they have to receive that information. So if you think about politicians, one of the reasons that they give really curt, tight lipped responses to difficult situations is so that they minimize the room for misinterpretation of their message. And they minimize the opportunity for journalists to twist those words that's why they do it so having a really tight message is important because that's part of the process of from a logical point of view controlling how that information is received because in sort of communication models I say something and you receive what you receive I can't control what you receive but I can try and control what you receive by, if I'm a politician, by being extremely tight-lipped about it and giving you no room for wig to wiggle around in. Or I can um, come at it from a, a different perspective. Now, um, another example of communication is like if you have a really good PR strategist, then my advice is to worship the ground that they walk on because the job that they do is really difficult. There is a big difference between a media opportunity and a PR opportunity. A PR opportunity is curated. It is that your PR strategist is going out and preparing the ground for your message to be received in the way that you intend it. That is no easy task because they've got to anchor it into what the journalist or the reporter is looking for and still maintain the integrity of your message and energy of your message. Not an easy task. So I was going to give you some quick tips of how you can actually try and manage how the energy of your message is received. Because we do feel the energy before we even start to read the words. So how do you set that energy so that it is received in them with greater clarity so people are coming on board with the intent of, of your message as well as the words or even sometimes reading beyond the words which is why we will forgive certain people their typos and others we won't and that's to do with the energy of it um, although i will say i will say this on the subject of typos we are so as human beings we are so schooled to not have typos, not to have grammatical errors, that they do disrupt the energy flow no matter what. They really, really do. So it is well worth your time trying to find them in order to maintain the integrity of the energy of your message. That aside, 
we do forgive some people their typos. Um, now, one of the things that I find really interesting for me is that I, I can actually read the energy of the intent, even if the words are sending it off. So it's always really interesting. I would make a lousy, lousy news reporter, probably make a good investigative journal, journalist instead, but I'd make a lousy news reporter. I'll give you, I'll tell you a little story. I used to do crisis media management training and I was, to be perfectly blunt, evil when I was doing it because coming back to politicians giving tight lip responses, when you've got a situation, a really difficult situation, maybe somebody's hurt themselves, maybe somebody's died and you've got to manage the media for that, you have got to be so tightly managed on your message so that there is no room for misunderstanding whatsoever. That is very hard to do when you do not have control over what other people are thinking. So it is really difficult. So I used to do the interviews and um, just zone in on every possible little bit where people hadn't quite tied it down. And they were gibbering wrecks by the end of it, but I did put my compassion to one side for the sake of the training. It was actually quite, quite fun. Anyway, so energetic anchoring. So how can you how can you use energetic anchoring to increase the clarity of your message? So we have energy in the words. I'm just going to look at this, just to make sure I get it in the right order, because otherwise I may go in the wrong order. Um, so what we're looking to do is create clarity in the energy of the message. The words come later. So the first thing to do is to actually connect to the energy of the piece that you want to write or you want to speak. So you ask yourself, what is, what does the energy feel like? Is it really upbeat? Is it humorous? Is it serious? Is it, um, is it um, very intellectual or is it very, very um, accessible or you want to feel into it. Now, the way that I do it, because elements are my thing, is that I will actually anchor into the energy of the elemental energy of a piece. Now, this is something that you can do for yourself, um, how you do it. I'll give you the way that I do it. You may find your own way of doing it. But I imagine myself in a circle with north, south, east and west. So to the north, I've got earth, to the east, I've got air, to the south, I've got fire and to the west, I've got water. And then I will close my eyes, take a deep breath and ask to connect, simply to connect to the energy of the piece. And all you're doing in doing that is actually asking your intuition, really, to bring that forward for you, because your intuition knows. And the way that I do it then is to literally breathe myself around that circle and find the bit where it feels right. Then I will find myself maybe half a dozen they're called energetic anchor words that I can use to anchor the energy of whatever I'm saying or writing. Now, there are two layers to this that I work on with my clients. There are the anchor words and the catalyst words. So the anchor words are the ones you may not actually use, but they are the anch they anchor the energy of that piece. And then the catalyst words would be the words that you actually use within the piece. They may be the same. They may not. It depends. But you use those words. Um, so how do you find those words? I mean, the, the reason that there's two layers to it is that we may find the energetic anchor words and they're ones that we can we can use, but we don't necessarily, we can understand them energetically, but we don't necessarily want to use them because they don't necessarily fit within the style of our business. So for example, an energetic anchor word for me might be aligned, but I would never use the word aligned because I think it's massively overused and that's not something I choose to use in my business. So I would come up with something else or just go to, a, um, if I haven't got it already in my head, just go to a thesaurus, follow a trail, put in aligned, see what else it comes up. Does that feel right? Maybe that one's not too far off the mark. So let's click on that one and just follow the trail until you find the right words. It's a really good way of, you can you can take this back and actually do this for your whole business as well. And that's something I do, I work with my clients on, is actually finding those keywords for their business. So that actually allows, when you've anchored the energy into those words and you use those words within whatever you're speaking or writing, then that allows the energy to infuse the entire piece that you're writing. And if you find yourself going off, off, 
slightly off on a tangent, you find that you're losing your thread, you can come back to those energetic anchor words to actually bring it back. It allows you to bring back the consistency of what you're writing or saying to your core message. And I cannot overstate how important it is to have, I don't mean core message in this classic marketing sense, is to have that solidity and strength of the core of what it is that you're here to do. That is obviously soul expression, which is what I'm here, here for. <laughs> That's my, my purpose is to actually unlock um, that channel through that strength of the core. And one of the ways that I'm doing that is through um, soul expression immersions, which are a two week journey into what it is that you're here to bring forward. And how do you anchor that in your next steps? And it is very much the sort of like the opening the door to that process. And those reservations for those are now open to start in September. And there are some spaces left. If you would like to reserve yours for September, then I will put the link beneath the video and you can go and, um, and have a look. Of course, ask me any questions that you have. Love to invite you onto that one. If you are in any way, shape or form, feeling that the energy of what it is that you are here to share and are trying to share is not quite sitting true with who you feel that you are. And it is an evolution, but it would be a perfect experience for you if that is what you're struggling with, you're struggling to bring, I'm gonna use a word now that I don't wanna use, that um, it's the, the message that you're bringing forward doesn't really feel aligned to the core of who you are. It doesn't feel to be entirely in integrity with who you think you are becoming. Then the soul expression immersion is ideal for you. So I would love to invite you onto that one. In the meantime, have a think about your own energetic anchoring words, um, whether that's for your business or for something you want to write. And a good exercise is just go and try and write a short piece and do the energetic anchoring. What you could do is write it first and then come do the, do the find the energetic anchors and then rewrite it and see the difference that it makes and see how it feels. And go ask somebody close to you to read the two and see how they respond to it and how they feel to deal with it. Anyway, that's my tip for Thursday. And I cannot wait to stop hiding out in this room. School, schools go back next week. Can't wait. All these photos of people with their kids first day back at school. Me with the hat on celebrating. Next week, I will be celebrating my sanity for the end of, end of the summer. Anyway, see you again soon. Bye.